Salam alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel, all you see Yunus Shafiri. In this video, we are going to see how you can integrate the Relay plugin for converting Figma UI into Android Studio with Jetpack Compose UI. Let's get started. So here I will be having simply an Android Studio project. This is one of the previous projects we worked on, which is Word app for the UI of the Room database. Okay, but it doesn't matter here. But here we will start installing the plugin and see how we can integrate it with Figma. So first of all, we'll go always to settings here. And from here, we can go to plugins and search for relay. Okay, in the marketplace, this is coming from Google. Okay, so it is the one, you should install it. Then here we'll do simply restart the IDE. Then we are ready to go. So the first thing I think we should do is to go here to the tools and check the relay set here. And from here, we need something called the token. So this plugin can access your thing on the Figma so we, they can like some API stuff going on, sending data to Google and everything. So here we will set up our Figma account. So here we are going to open a new Figma account. Let's get started. This is my account. And what do I do? I'm a software developer. Yeah, okay. I hope they can give us something we try on. I don't want to create, create a new thing. Welcome to Figma. We'll do this later. Start for free, please. I will get started on my Thank you very much. And here there is this Figma basics. I think we can use it. We need just a UI to start working with it. Or oh, let's go back first. So first of all, we need also to have this plugin here into the Figma. So we will go from here. I think we will go to plugins and here we'll find more plugins. We will search relay, relay for Figma. Here it is. So first of all, here we can click on it. Then we should here save it. Why we need to do it from here? Because that way, the next time you go to the plugin, you will see it here. We click on it. This means we are running it and then we will wait. Okay, send it, why not? And then we can create UI packages. But before that, we should, as I said, export that token. So go back to your files here and check here in the settings. And from here in the bottom, exactly, here is personal access token. So here we create something, let's call it Android Studio token, something like that. They will give you the link here for the token here. Like I know you can see it, you can copy it, work with it, but I will revoke the access after <laughs> recording this video. Okay, so just copy it. This is the only time you will see it. After that, if you do like that, you won't be able to check it. Here in the setting, you have something called Android Studio token, but you can't use it anymore. So let's go back to Android Studio. Here in Android Studio, simply paste it like that and click OK. That way we have this integration between Android Studio and the Figma. How we can create UI, simply we'll go to File, New, and here there is this Import UI Package. So where it will put it, we will check it also. So let's do this Import UI Package. Okay, send it, why not? Then the App Team, Translate Figma Site to Compose Team. Okay, so we have this Material Design 2 or Material Design 3. Now I will just put the UI Package here, but before that, let's go back here and check how we can do this. Okay, so there is this prototyping in Figma, I think. This is by default created here. So what we need is that, is that like here is the thing, we can move components from this UI directly into Android Studio. So let's check how we can do it. So first of all, sorry. So there is a lot of stuff here. So here what I need to do, let's say that I want this as a component. What I need to do is to select it and go back to plugins here, relay for Figma. Now here they will tell me that select a component on canvas and click on the button below it to package. I'm not able to select it, so this is not a component. What I can do is click left and search for create component. So here I'm able to create a UI package from that. Now here come the interesting parts. I can customize this with several parameters. Like parameter by parameters, we mean parameters to the composable function. Here we click on parameter. Let's say that I want parameter tab handler, this introduction or string parameter, that would be good. I can click on the name of the parameter. Let's call it title. It will be a string, of course. Description, let's say that we have only this. And let's say I also want a click handle. This one, let's call it on click of that button. Okay, can I select something else? Select the layer, this one. And that way I think I'm having this button as UI package. Now what I need to do there is this share with developers. So they will tell you, add a new name version for this file. So I should rename this or I can keep using that. 
And next, I can click on share here. You can do copy the link. What I need to do then is go back to Android Studio. And here I will just paste this link and do next. It will fetch the UI packages, whatever there is UI packages there. It will be only one UI package of the button. Exactly. So we do have this button. We do have one content parameter and one interaction handle. Yeah, this is it. I will do create. Then what I need to do is just to compile. So we will have a new line here or we'll have a new package here. Well, this should happen before, right? We should tell Android Studio to have a plugin of Relay. The instructions are here to how to install it. Okay, so this is the thing on Relay part, but here the thing on Figma part, but here for the Android Studio part. We need this plugin and we need this okay in the setting. I believe this goes well. Here, of course, in the build.gradle file, you put it here, I think. And in the settings, I believe we do have all of our stuff ready. And I think that's it. I can sync it right now. Now, if you do that, you will see a new package coming here. Okay, it's called UI package. So here, after that adding of the package, right, you will see the button description of the button here. The magic will happen here, right? We will convert this JSON to like normal Jetpack Compose. This will be done by the plugin, of course. And like just to mention, I added some couple of things here, this dependency here or the class path and also the plugin, which is the same here as the plugin here. You can delete it from here, it doesn't matter. Gradle is not uh, claiming. Now what we can do is that we can use our button. Problem is we named it as a button. Here is the button here. It has a modifier on click and the title. This is our button. If you click on it, well, it will be a problem because you are already using normal button here exactly. So we should remove that. It is my fault. I shouldn't have named it this button. If you click on it, you will see it here. You will see it here as modifier and here is our button. Here, I don't think we can change it. I, I'm not able to see the folder. Ah, it is here under the bottom part. Usually we have something going up here, but I don't think we are, we are able to modify this code. Let's say that from the title preview, you can use the title as a rectangle, as a login. Where is this login coming? So here we should have this title part as string like that. And you can give it this one, something like that. And I think we'll have an error here. So we'll pass, I think that title. We do have this title. Let me check. Why do we have this problem? Mixed names and Christian are okay. So title equal title like that. And that would work, I think. Hola, like that. And for the preview, we see hola something. Exactly. So that way you can use the button here. Let's put, for example, hello world, like that. Generated source file should not be edited. I'm able to edit it here, but once like I do recompilation, all of this will go. So if I click like that, everything will go here. So I'm not able to do the edit part. And this can be a problem. Exactly as you can see, it is looking. This has been like changed. Okay. It is login here. So as you can see, this will be a problem in the future, but at least you can try if it is working good or not. Why, be, why this can be a problem? Because if you can see here, like what is the beauty here? It's that the designer can change the design. So with one click, I don't know if you can include some job in the continuous integration part. So it will check the Figma if it has been changed and then update directly the repository with a new design. So me as a developer, when I wake up to the new day, I will see the design just have updated without me doing nothing. This is the beauty, but this can raise some issues because let's say that the designer add a new click list and I'm not handling that click listener here. Well, we can have some default thing here that would make them compile. I, I think we can reach the compilation thing, we can make them compile, but this will raise, because designers and developers are not the same, so we should have some shared understanding about this Relay plugin in order to make most of it. So definitely having this kind of, imagine like several components, at least for the components part, I'm not talking about the whole UI, whole user interface, at least for those components that will be used in several parts, buttons, colors, I don't know, headers and all other stuff, this will be a good thing. So here, as I said, if the designer changed something, it would be great if we have some thing to include in the CI pipeline that we do that automatically for us. Otherwise, I think you can do that. 
to the update UI package if it has been changed and that will do the work for you. This is it for this short video. I just wanted to show you how you can include this plugin. I'm not working with this plugin yet. I'm just exploring the service of possibilities and also what we can do with that. As I said, this would require collaboration between the designers and the developers in order to get the most of it, especially in naming. If you go here, for example, there is this stuff that's going on here. If you go back to the plugin, this one, if you go back here, like for example, the naming of the parameters and the properties, and we didn't use the property directly, I think, because this is a property. I don't know how to refer to the login as a property that will be changed. So as I said, there is some learning curve between the developer and the designers, especially we can't modify them. So it's better to use the right naming. So the designers will have to get some understanding conversions about how the code will be structured. But this is, as I said, this must be a collaboration between developers and designers. So this is it for this video. I hope you understood something about the Relay in Android and you are welcome to share your experience with this plugin, some pitfalls and uh, tips you can use all. As I said, I'm not using it yet, but I will be doing it in the near future. Yeah, this is it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as always and see you in the next videos. Assalamu alaikum.